Dollywood is an absolutely amazing, family-friendly theme park located in the tourist trap of Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. This place is one of my all-time favorite theme parks. It has an outstanding location, great scenery and theming, some really nice food, and my personal favorite, an outstanding selection of roller coasters. And obviously, those roller coasters are the premise of today's video. We are going to be ranking every single one of them, but just a quick note, I only got to ride seven out of the nine roller coasters here due to time constraints on my trip. Now, the two roller coasters I missed were a kiddie coaster called Whistle Punk Chaser and a dark ride with a few small dips and turns called Blazing Fury. If I were to miss out on any roller coasters on my trip, I would definitely want them to be the smallest ones, so I am not all that disappointed. Moving on, every single roller coaster at Dollywood fits into the park very well, and all, well, all but one are very good rides, and the one that isn't a good ride is coming in at the number seven spot. At number seven, we have Mystery Mine, the park's Gerslauer Eurofighter. I'm sorry that I have to put it this low. I really, really wanted to like this coaster. I thought that it looked like a fun and sort of intense ride. However, it just fell so short of those expectations. If you guys have watched my channel for a while now, you would know that I am usually not very negative and I try to find the good in every ride. However, the only thing saving Mystery Mine from being a dumpster fire is the theming. Yeah, I'll admit it, the theming is really, really good. However, the track profiling is a joke, and with the over-the-shoulder restraints being right next to your ears, it's literally impossible to avoid headbanging. Moving on to number 6 is Dragonflyer, the new for 2019 Vacoma Suspended Family Coaster. Unlike Mystery Mine, this coaster absolutely blew away my expectations. I don't really know what I was expecting. I was just not expecting what I got. This coaster is really intense for a family coaster. Not too intense for the kids to be scared off, but still thrilling enough for the parents to enjoy. The small Small dips and turns are wildly entertaining, and even if you are a larger thrill seeker, I would definitely say check this one out. At number 5, we have Fire Chaser Express, the park's Gerslauer family launch coaster. Just like Dragonflyer, this coaster absolutely blew me away. Super smooth, super fun, and even for a family coaster, it felt a little intense. I don't understand why this ride doesn't get talked about more. It has great scenery, pretty nice theming, and the ride experience isn't bad either. It has a few thrilling turns and large drops that really help out the ride experience. When sitting in the front row, you get some nice and mild floater airtime throughout the layout, and at the bottom of the large drop, you feel if you are flying due to the awesome wind in your face. Even if you are a larger thrill seeker and probably want to gravitate towards Wild Eagle, which is just about 100 feet away, I'd say you should still check this one out. At number four, we have Tennessee Tornado. It honestly hurts me putting this ride this low. However, it is just such a short experience, I couldn't see myself putting it any higher. Tennessee Tornado gave me flashbacks to riding Vortex at Kings Island back in the good old days. But back to Tennessee Tornado. This ride is super intense and it has great pacing. Not to mention that all of the valleys in between drops and inversions are very tight and really forceful. Despite all of those being awesome, my favorite part of the ride is still the airtime moments. When sitting in the back row, the pre-drop actually gives a nice pop of ejector airtime. After bottoming out and turning around, the first drop actually gives some of the best airtime I've experienced. Some really sustained ejector airtime. It is insane. Despite this coaster being rather short, I say that you should still check it out. It is a whole lot of fun. At number three is Wild Eagle, the park's BM wing coaster that opened in 2012. Despite everybody hating on this ride for no reason, I still found it to be super fun and enjoyable. And even though everybody claims it to be extremely forceless, I actually grayed out on it. Surprising, isn't it? Despite plenty of people saying that this ride doesn't have any near-miss elements, I would have to disagree. Since I was sitting on the outer seat on multiple occasions, it felt as if I were going to get slapped in the face by a tree. Anyways, due to the surreal setting and really smooth ride experience, you honestly feel as if you are riding an eagle through a forest. At number two is Thunderhead, the park's GCI wooden coaster that opened in 2007. Due to me going into this ride thinking that it would be rather rough, I was expecting the worst. However, it blew me away. Due to some recent track work that I was unaware about, it was super, super smooth. Due to this coaster's twister layout, it focuses on airtime just as much as it focuses on laterals. And oh boy, the laterals are strong with this one. Throughout the entire ride, you will be thrown around in your seat due to the turns having a very low banking. Moving away from laterals, 
matter or else this coaster has some super strong airtime. In fact, I'm not going to go too in-depth with the ride here since I already have a full in-depth review of it on my channel that you can go check out. Anyways, this is a really strong wooden coaster and I definitely recommend it. And obviously, at the number one spot, we have Lightning Rod, the park's RMC topper track launched wooden coaster. This ride has everything you could want in a coaster and more. Great theming, great setting, great scenery, amazing airtime, a great launch, and so much more. Words cannot describe on how powerful this airtime really is. Just like every other YouTuber says, that you need to get out to Dollywood for yourself to ride it. It's really just that hard to explain. There are so many different varieties in the airtime, whether you're sideways, almost sideways, or just straight up getting yeeted out of your seat. I just cannot express enough how much you guys need to go out to Dollywood just to ride Lightning Rod. Lightning Rod makes this park what it is, but the park just has so much more. Lightning Rod is so good, it's actually my new favorite roller coaster. Well, that's gonna wrap up my video ranking every single roller coaster at Dollywood. Did you agree with the placements in this video? Probably not, but that's okay. Let me know what your top five roller coasters at Dollywood are in the comments down below. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time on Hang Time Thrills. Oh,